Amazon is shutting down a program where it would pay ambassadors to tweet positively about the company. And when you see a headline like this, two things come to mind, at least for me. The first is that when it comes to employer branding, what it means to work in an organization, how you get people to choose you, over a long enough time horizon, the only way to, to make sure that you're sustainable and that you're attractive you know, long term is to make sure that your employer brand is rooted in honesty. We've talked in, in other recordings about how if you go to the market with an employer brand or an aesthetic or a, a portrayal of what it's like to work at your organization and it isn't rooted in honesty, what you get over a long term is a bump up in churn. You, you reduce your retention because people come to the organization thinking that the work environment is one way, realize quickly that it isn't that way, and then you, know, you, you lose workers. So for, for, for this program specifically, where Amazon was, was paying warehouse ambassadors to tweet about the company, it's saying that it, it isn't getting enough yield, which makes sense in a, in a labor market the way it is right now. It, it, you you kind of get to a place where it doesn't matter what you say about an organization um, on the positive side. If people don't want to come to work for your organization, it, they're not going to come work there. Um, in a market like this where people are moving around all the time. We, we, we're coming off the back of the great resignation for the last two years. I, it, it's too difficult. And I think you're not going to see much um, much of a, a positive gain in, in terms of getting people to be attracted to work your organization, especially if you're paying people to, to tweet about it. I think people can start, sort of see through that. Um, but there's an important quote in the story uh, from uh, an executive or someone at Amazon uh, that says it's important that we do a good job of educating people about the actual environment inside our fulfillment centers. Again, going back to a, to another recording where we talk about uh, employer value proposition, it doesn't matter what your organization is about. You know, it, it could be a work hard, play hard culture. It could be one where everybody uh, is allowed to take Friday off to go and, and do yoga. Uh, it doesn't matter what kind of environment or lifestyle that, that your company or, or the, your leadership wants to drive your organization, there will be a talent pool that is attracted to that work life. You can see it just in the way that the, the world is set up right now. I mean, we have individuals who go into investment banking and consulting who are happy to work 60, 80, you know, 90, 100 hours a week um, for a kind of work lifestyle that, that they want. And you also have individuals who only want to work 25 hours to 30 hours a week um, because that's what they're looking for. And so it, when, you, when it comes to an employer brand and an employer value proposition, you've got to be honest about what you want to be as an organization and then the codes that you're sending out in terms of messaging to the, to the market so that your employer brand does what it needs to do, which is attract the kind of workers that you need and then repel the kind of workers that you don't. Amazon, of course, hires at such a huge scale that the, the, the waters get a little bit muddy, right? So um, they've got another program that they've wound down uh, since the end of last year, which is where they would pay individuals $5,000 to leave the company. And this was a way that they could get seasonal workers off their books. The caveat being that if you, if you took this $5,000 uh, pay to quit bonus, that you weren't able to come back to work for Amazon again. And that's a useful tactic, of course, when it comes to you know, ramping up hiring over you know, time in the holiday season, for example, and then winding down hiring because you don't need the headcount anymore. Um, in a labor shortage, and in the market the way it is right now, they've had to pull that away so that you can get people to stay. Because you know, that would be a, if, if you knew that you were going to only work at Amazon for one, one season, that's not a bad little paycheck to, to pick up at the end of it. Um, so they've had to take that away uh, to combat the labor shortage, um, but also a lot, making sure that your employer brand and the way that you, you go into the market speaks honestly about the work environment is another way that you can combat churn and, and improve your retention. We talk about fulfillment center again. It, it, fulfillment centers, regardless of whether they're hard driving or they're data driven or whatever the reality is within a fulfillment center, if Amazon is able to go to the market and, and speak to the reality of what it's like to work at a fulfillment center, for example, I reckon that over a long enough time period, they'll be able to, to improve the things that need to get improved such that if 
a fulfillment center isn't an attractive place to work today, it, it can be in, in the future. But what that requires is a current state assessment of what the reality is instead of programs that are designed to, I wouldn't go as far as to say manipulate, but uh, speak overly positive about an experience. Because what, what then that happens is you, you, you drive a negative sentiment, and that's very damaging over the long term as well. What we found, of course, over over time is that you get negativity about work. So I'll use uh, Glassdoor reviews, for example, as a proxy. The only time people leave negative reviews or reviews in general uh, on, on a platform like that about a work experience is when they're overly happy or overly unhappy. And the reality is that for the majority of, it, of workers, they're somewhere in the middle of that. You know, like the, the, there's satisfaction, and, and if you're if you're if you're content about what what you're doing, you typically don't feel the urge to go and leave reviews on on platforms. Um, and so, what you get on on these these platforms is uh, almost the, you see the the troughs and you see the peaks of what is the actual work environment. And really, you know, if people were were measured enough, you'd you'd try to look at the the average and, and try to get a sentiment score that way. Um, but going back to the original point, it's important that companies root their employer brands in honesty, in reality, because that serves two purposes. One, in the, in the immediate term, it attracts the kind of workers that are going to be attracted to your culture right now. But over a long enough time horizon, what it allows you to do is say, okay, well, if working at our company is X, and we want it to be Y, you can then outline the steps to get to Y. Without understanding what X is and without outlining what where you want to get to Y, you're not able to draw those lines. If you're if you are rooted in an experience but think or want to portray that you are the Y experience, then that delta, the gap between those two experiences, is where you start to see um, the the your your retention get hit and your cost per hire go up and, and um, you know, sentiment around your company start to fall. So again, here's the outline of the story is Amazon is, is ending this program where it was paying warehouse workers to tweet positively about the warehouse experience. And I think that it's a good idea, regardless of whether this is a, uh, a short-term labor shortage thing um, or something more, more strategic, um, to get back to a place where you're rooted in the reality and the truth of working at the environment.